I think I figured out what the problem with this chair is. Luckily we're going to this, it's not a maker expo, but it's some sort of something or other. And hopefully there'll be electrical tape and zip ties here and I can get this thing fixed. Geek craft. Yeah, geek, geek craft, whatever that is. And that is a television. Okay, and then back down to the first floor. <laughs> we, we came in the wrong side of the building. This is elevator number four. You didn't know the building. We can ride the elevators up and down. I know. It's like a a ticket ride, I guess. Yeah. Ah, huh, there it is. A little bit of like the SCA or something like that. It's like, it's like what? LARPing. <laughs> what do they call it when they dress up in battle? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that LARPing? Yeah. We in our way. Okay. Uh, let's go to the right, I guess. And... Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's, uh, <laughs> that's the one we need right there. But thanks. <laughs> of course, you go over that one. <laughs> I like the Sesame Street one. <laughs> Warcraft. <laughs> Dragony things. <laughs> One of these days, I'm just gonna make a banner. So that'll just be my, my name. Okay. Ah, you can just look at that, it's fine. Okay. Right. okay, so we've got some uh, old cell phone screens. And these are like old Pentiums or something. Or no, AMDs. Nice. Processor. <laughs> Hard drive read heads. <laughs> Yeah, she she found those, and then she found an old uh, sort of uh, the bone uh, dinosaur piece. Yeah. She's like I can make these work together. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's something you see very often. Exactly. <laughs> or ever, actually. <laughs> I, I've, I've seen a couple yeah. of the computer bugs. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. I guess you run out of things. There's only so many things you can write. Yeah, if you see, like, beneath it, all these things repeat. He's checking out all the words. Oh, nice. Let's check out. So that's cardiac equations, like stroke volume, injection fraction, cardiac output. I have several pieces. She said there's uh, descriptions on the back of the, the smaller prints. So, <laughs> this is a spine. Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. So that's gone with active range of motion for each vertebra. It does have this color. Oh, wow. Yeah. This looks more like an x-ray. Yeah, yeah. that color. <laughs> that's cool. Said, um, psychiatry? Yeah. So this is my brain. The, the and it's drawn with this data that shows a neurological improvement in my brain after the intervention. That represents an 80% improvement in my alpha asymmetry score, which is significant. I also have the Hertz frequency for alpha waves, what you see here. And then I found that my most useful skills for letting depression and anxiety was meditation and access to nature oh, and the image. And it uh, also has a chemical formula for alpha pinene in there, so that's something released from product herbs. I do, that's like half the fun, yeah. So when they told me not to eat the pine cones, they were wrong? Well, no, they weren't. It's I said smell. Yes. It's, it's, it's laser etching to uh, do this. Wow. Laser. Oh, and I almost forgot. At that craft fair festival thing yesterday, I heard someone say the most amazing thing I've ever heard anyone say. We were at this booth and they were um, 
like etching uh, images on uh, glassware, like um, coffee cups and beer steins and stuff like that. And she said, we're finally able to put a TARDIS on a shot glass. <laughs> I thought that was the best thing anyone could ever say. And uh, of course, referring to uh, Doctor Who and uh, you know, the TARDIS, AKA phone booth. I just thought that was amazing. Still amazed by the color you guys get on these. <laughs> it's so cool. managed to get the chair fixed. Um, kind of scratched the crap out of my arm and got a bunch of grease all over me. But uh, it'll work for now until I can replace the connector that's actually bad. Kind of forgot this grease I use on this chair was engineered by Boeing not to come off of things. So no amount of washing and scrubbing is gonna remove that. What we have here is the bounder. And I got these new tires on it, I don't know, a couple months ago. They've been working pretty well. But what I've been noticing is this chair seems to have a little bit of a negative camber. So the tires are wearing much faster. Where's a flashlight? Um, so as you can see, the tires are wearing much faster on the inside than they are on the outside. So what I'm going to do, actually, especially this side, this one seems to be a lot more worn. But anyways, um, I'm going to pop these off of here. They're directional tires, so I can't just swap them left to right with the wheels. So I'm going to take them off of here. I'm going to demount them from the rims, switch sides, put them back on, and then hopefully uh, we should be able to take advantage of the rest of the tread over here and maybe, well, not double the life, but maybe give it two-thirds more, something like that. But yeah, fun stuff. These bounders are a little bit on the interesting side though because the same bolts that hold the wheels to the chair also hold the two halves of the split rim together. So you have to make sure you deflate the tires <laughs> before you take these bolts off. Otherwise this wheel is going to explode in your face like uh, the split rims of old on the old semi trucks. These don't have the rings luckily. So you don't have to worry about them going flying, but still. Um, spacer on here. But yeah, you uh, you gotta be careful. Yeah, so there you can see our tread's kinda worn down on this side, but not so much over here. Get these bolts out of here. Oh wow, that is significantly worn. Huh. Well, I mean, I've had these on here for two months, maybe almost three. Um, but yeah, regardless, uh, we're going to uh, swap them over and uh, we'll get a little bit more life out of these. Wow, that was a lot easier than I thought. Yeah, that's getting pretty thin. That's kind of me. That's kind of worrisome. <laughs> um, 
I'm not 100% sure if the camber is adjustable on this chair or what exactly you need to do to keep that from happening. I mean, these are ATV tires and they are, well, let's, let's just say me on the chair is probably a little bit over the load range for these tires. So it kind of makes sense that they're melting a little bit. Um, but after feeling this now, um, I think I'm gonna order some new tires tomorrow. I'm gonna put these back on here and I'm gonna switch. I'm going to switch them around and put them back on here, but yeah, that, uh, that kind of worries me there how thin that's getting. Okay, I've gotten them swapped. As you can see, the worn edges over here, the not as worn edges on this side, and same over here. A lot more worn here than here. The amount of camber it has is not like immediately visible. I mean, obviously there is some because of how it's wearing, but uh, yeah, the way the motors and the stuff mount in this thing, there is, I'm pretty sure, a little bit of adjustment. I need to get a hold of Bounder and ask what their procedure is on this, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna hop in this thing, head outside, and uh, see how it is. So, headed out here to the uh, P.O. box, and uh, I think I'm gonna close it. I'm gonna move it to a different location that's a little bit more convenient. Something about driving way out into the middle of nowhere, anytime I wanna get the mail, uh, not so appealing. Wow, they see me backing up and they go ahead walk in front of me, or try to. Finally uh, done with this wretched part of town. There's one Goodwill out here I should probably hit up. It's, uh... People always run this light. <laughs> yeah, there's one Goodwill I need to hit up while I'm out here, just because, you know, nostalgia. <laughs> the super dumpy apartments were right over here before. The reason I originally got that mailbox was, well, one, for the channel, but also, there was no way to physically access the uh, the mailboxes at the apartments if you're a wheelchair user. Yeah, anyways, I got that mailbox originally because if you're a wheelchair user, there was no way to get to the mailboxes at these apartments over here. Uh, I filed a complaint with the DOJ and they came out and uh, said there was gross violations of ADA law at that place. I don't know how they're going to enforce it or what exactly they're going to do, but... Um, yeah, turns out I was right. That place is not wheelchair accessible. Now there was some people that told me, oh, well, you shouldn't move into a place that isn't accessible and then try to force them to, uh, um, what am I trying to say? Force them to change things. It's like, yeah, I understand that. But at the same time, there's ADA laws and things should be set to a minimum. It's not like I picked the place and decided, oh, hey, I'm going to uh, move in here and try to sue these guys into compliance. I kind of got the place. I mean, it wasn't completely sight unseen, but I made assumptions that they were going to follow basic ADA laws. And then come to find out later, I couldn't get into the office. I couldn't get to the mailbox. I couldn't even get into the management building whatsoever. And there was all this stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, I did move into a place that's uh, not accessible but I kind of made some assumptions about them following the law. Yeah, probably that's my fault, I guess. But I just find it strange when people say, oh, well, you should just put up with it. You shouldn't bully your way in somewhere and try to get them to change the laws. But, uh, I don't know. I don't know. The last few days or so, I'm just kind of, uh, I wouldn't say I'm in a scorched earth mode, but I definitely stopped caring about a lot of things. And, uh, you know, at a certain point, you you try to do what's right and you try to be accommodating, but uh, at a certain point, you can only do what you can do. And if my efforts are completely thrown away to the wind, then so be it. At a certain point, I have to continue living my life and, uh, uh, whatever. 
I just wound up leaving the store. I got in there and it was just way too crowded. Um, although when I tried to leave, the exit was completely blocked by carts again. I don't know, I guess maybe this kind of goes along with what I'm saying. There's certain things that frustrate me and um, at a certain point you have to do what you have to do for self-preservation to um, continue getting through life. And uh, this traffic is a mess. Hang on a minute. But at a certain point, things that cause you stress and uh, are sort of a daily burden as it were, you just gotta get rid of them. I, uh, yeah. So it's nice getting rid of that one storage unit and uh, getting rid of the P.O. box that is way out here in the middle of nowhere will be a good help as well. And moving it somewhere closer. I don't know, I guess I'm just sort of reconsidering a lot of things that I do every day in the company I keep and, uh, and trying to make modifications to uh, everything just to simplify, less stress, all that. So, I don't know. I mean, for the last three years, I've still had a goal of, uh, you know, getting a house or something that has a big garage or a shop or some workspace or something like that. So I've been trying to live cheap to, uh, you know, make that happen faster, kind of put money away and whatnot. But unfortunately, as a result, um, the last few places I've lived haven't really worked out. I mean, I'm in a place now that's good. I'm by myself. I know I said I'd never do apartments again, but I think being in an apartment is better than having roommates at this point. Um, the last place I was at turned toxic in a hurry. And, you know, unfortunately, there were some friendships that suffered as a result. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Would I have done anything differently? I mean, maybe, but I think things I would have done differently would have potentially also caused issues. And you know, people are people, whether you're in a wheelchair or not. But I have noticed that, you know, even myself included, when you're in a chair, the space you live, not like you're territorial of it, but you don't want people coming in there and doing stuff and, you know, changing things or whatever. So, I mean, I understand that component of it. I don't know. Is it worth it? I mean, I'm back in an apartment now. I have to deal with neighbors. That's fine, I guess. I mean, it's better than the alternative. I'm not trying to burn bridges or whatever, but at a certain point, you can only put forth so much effort to uh, try and do things. And then after that, I think you just kind of have to sit on it and let time work its way, let things run their course. I'm just trying to move forward in life, and I guess uh, everyone has their own paths they choose and different goals and things they try to do. And for me, uh, trying to get closer to the goal of having my own place where I can work and everything has kind of caused issues. But I don't know what else to do. And, you know, I've just gotten to the point where I'm like, you know what? Oh well, I guess. I mean, I'm not going to willfully go out and try to burn bridges and cause problems and step on people or whatever, even though I've been accused of that by multiple people. I guess they don't know me very well if they think that's the case, but you just got to move forward. I, uh, now that I'm back in this apartment, yeah, it's expensive and it's going to kind of delay my goals moving forward, but uh, you got to do what you got to do. Um, and right now I'm just kind of in damage control mode where I'm trying to sort things out and get everything calmed down and do what I need to do to live a little bit more stress-free. And uh, I think isolating myself might be part of that right now. I guess God invented vacations for a reason. Uh, sometimes you just need a break, need to get out, but uh, I don't know. I'm. I'll figure something out. I always seem to. 
I just hope it doesn't end up with more people uh, thinking I'm the bad guy. <laughs> By the way, this van, I probably shouldn't talk about it because I'm sure it'll break as soon as I say something, but uh, with all the troubles it's given me, overall it's been somewhat... Okay, this guy's driving down the road the wrong side. Uh, we're going to go around this person. But we're at 212,000 miles and the AC blows cold, <laughs> so I can't complain too much. I mean, I definitely need to fix that wheel bearing, but... Um, yeah, seems to work. Okay, now for something fun. I uh, haven't checked the mailbox in like over a month, um, and I knew somebody was sending something. I I didn't know what it was exactly, but I'm pretty sure it's been sitting there for a while. Let's see if there's a date on here. Ooh, five sixteen. Yeah, so it's been almost exactly a month. Well, let's go ahead and see what this is. I'm supposed to be able to tear these open. And we have upcharge AC adapter. What is this? Uh 12 volts, 3.3 amps. I'm not 100% sure what this is for. Uh, Samsung. Oh! Is this? I think this is a power adapter for this thing. Um, I may have destroyed the connector. I think I still have it though. Okay, here's the connector. Let's see here. Uh, I'm assuming it's for this thing? Because it says... Oh yeah, it does. Uh, for Samsung adapter for SDP 860, which is what this thing is. Okay, cool. Um, I don't think I completely destroyed this. Yeah, um, it actually would be nice to have the proper connector in that thing. So, I might take that back apart and reinstall this little jack <laughs> that I so forcefully removed. Cool, well hey, thanks man. Um, man, I, uh, time flies and I kind of forget about things. But, uh, yeah, um, I've been using this thing a ton by the way, and not, uh, not all of it's stuff I've been doing on video, but uh, yeah, I think, cause right now it's literally just, cause right now it's literally just like hardwired in and there's no way to remove the cord, which is less than ideal. So yeah, um, I think I might take it back apart and reinstall this then. Sweet. All right, cool. Well, that's me going from uh, super confused to grateful. <laughs> we got the, uh, it's like a Disney movie here. We got the, entire range of emotions. <laughs> All right, I gotta get some stuff cleaned up in here. It's, uh, the boxes are kind of getting out of control. This letter is part of an exciting new project. Um, unfortunately, I may not be able to tell you about it for maybe almost a month, but it will be worth it. Ma'am? Would someone move these carts so I can get in the door here? <laughs> <laughs> 